Nahar, and welcome to this latest edition of Silicon Grapevine. Today I'm talking to Malini Murthy, who's the country head for Renaissance in India, and also a senior director of engineering, um, with quite a prolific profile both in the U uh, in Canada and uh, and India. So Malini, hello. Nice to meet you, Nitin. Thank you for the opportunity. No problem. <laughs> so uh, Malini, uh, tell me uh, first of all, what do you do here? I, mean, I think um, you've ju just joined about one and a half years ago, and. Uh, you are um, doing wonderful things at Renaissance. Just tell me a little bit about that before we go into a little bit of your profile. Sure. So I play a couple of roles at Renaissance. Um, the first one is the country head role where, um, you know, different aspects of uh, strategy and as well as uh, operation uh, of Renaissance India. Renaissance is on an amazing growth path in India. So I'm, I'm, I'm helping steer that ship. Um, on the uh, design side, I, I have a design team that uh, in the analog and connectivity space. So we've we've, we've built an end-to-end -end design team in India as well. Okay. Yeah. Now you said uh, tremendous growth. I mean, just give me a sense of that because I think you were telling me earlier how it's grown in terms of numbers and, and all that. Yeah. So um, Renesis in the Re Renesis, um in India started uh, about 2014. Um, and a large focus of Renesis was on the um, marketing side, the sales okay. and marketing side. And mm. uh, we've most most recently, in the last three or four years, we've really uh, grown on the engineering side. We've more than doubled in the last um, year and a half, and the with the plan of uh, growing three x in by twenty twenty five end. For the India operation. For India operation. And, and when you say growing three x, so is that sort of looking at uh, Renesis global products into India, or is it a uh, Indian Renesas uh, ICs, uh, I, I guess it's all part of the global portfolio. Yeah, so definitely integrating into the global space. Yeah. But having said that, India is also in a very interesting phase of growth where um, the we're seeing a product inflection point in India. And mm. so trying to align some of our products uh, to be made for India is also something that we are considering uh, along with growing from a global standpoint as well. And, and I, I think um, you've actually got involved in quite a lot of uh, roles here with Renesis in India. And yeah, it's, it's, you know, you've initiated lots of different programs uh, in terms of connectivity with the ecosystem. Is that right? Yes. I mean, I think that's imperative for growth. Yeah. Uh, I think for one, Renesis, uh, the brand name, uh, you know, we want engineers to join us. For that, they need to know Renesis. So it's imperative to get into some of these programs, go speak in universities, as well as, uh, you know, talk in uh, forums like uh, IESA and Semicon India. And we're really trying to do all that to get Renesis' name out there. Let's turn to you a little bit. Uh, now, you could have been a tennis player, but instead <laughs> you turned to electronics. Uh, but how did you get into electronics and sort of to develop both skills or and then decided that this was the one for me? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, um, oh, oh, you're a sports person, really, aren't you? I am. I truly am. Uh, you know, I would have loved to become a sports player, but uh, around my 11th, 12th grade, I um, I had this injury and I had to uh, pivot from uh, sports to uh, my education. And mm. um, I moved towards engineering largely, to be honest, not because I was amazing at tinkering with things. I spent most of my childhood playing, but largely because of uh, uh, my peer pressure. And uh, interestingly, I joined electronics because um, I was challenged in that people told me, well, getting into software is easy, but getting into hardware design is super difficult. So it was almost like a mission for me to get into hardware design. Wow. It's a, it's a... Take up the challenge. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, yes. that's, uh, that's interesting. The sports player in me, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take up the challenge and win. Um, and so you, you study here in India, but then uh, what was the path that you took from yeah. there? So I studied in uh, India. I studied in a college called RV College in Bangalore. Um, and then um, I, I went on to do my master's in a program called uh, Singapore MIT Alliance, where right. you do a part of your course in NUS Singapore and a part of it in uh, Boston. And interestingly, my engineering was uh, on the electrical engineering side, high power systems. Well, yes. um, and then my master's was in high performance compute and uh, uh, 
you know, it, this was around 2001, 2002, and I was looking And both of those are in vogue right now. <laughs> yes, they're both in vogue right now. But at that point, uh, you know, when we were looking for, for jobs, I, I got my first job in a software company, and um, I really wanted to be in the hardware space. So uh, 2001, with the crisis, there was this one role in National Semiconductor, and there were 100 people standing outside. And for right. that one role, new college grad role, so I stood, I got in, and that took me through the path of LSI design. That was here or in, in, in the US? In Bangalore. Oh, okay. Uh, so then how did you end up in the US? Uh, so what did you do at National? You were doing uh, the application engineer, or a design engineer, actually. So I was a design engineer at National Semiconductor, yeah. and um, I did that for about uh, three and a half years, uh, which is when I discovered that uh, there were things about me that were in just design engineering. I like to talk to people. I like to work with people. Uh, I didn't want to sit at my desk and figure out a problem on my own. I always wanted to sit with other people and figure it out together. Mm. Um, and um, interestingly, I went to a snug conference and I oh, said, okay. well, I need to I need to move to applications engineering. I need to speak to customers. I need to speak to people. Uh, and I got lucky because um, at that point, I was moving to Canada uh, and uh, I, I was getting married. I was moving to Canada. Sure. And um, I, I focused on, you know, trying to get a job as an application engineer, and that happened, um, which really took me down the path of uh, customer-facing uh, design. And, and that was still at National or other? Where? Yeah, so I moved, when I moved to Canada, I moved to Synopsis. Okay, that's um, right. And that's, that's where I was an application. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, yeah. I became an application engineer um, at uh, uh, at the USB group. Okay. And, and that got me a little bit more interested because one of the things I realized I enjoyed doing was really understanding what a customer needs and and not really going zooming down into I want to solve the problems of the world, but really what do you need? Let's get the customer sorted and let's move on with design. So that that I started figuring out uh, you know a little bit more about who I was. Oh, huh? yeah, that's that's pretty good. And so then. Uh, th that was with Synopsys, then what ha what happened next? After. So I, I did that for a few years, and uh, I I don't know, I think I had many uh, midlife crises as, as I went along. I still haven't hit the big one, I think. You're still not midlife, know. but anyway. <laughs> 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 so uh, at that point, I was again questioning whether, you know, I was, uh, I just, I wanted to stick with engineering. Should I go to an MBA? What should I do? Around that time, I, I also, uh, you know, I, I, I was trying to figure out whether I wanted to move into uh, a management role, um, go do an MBA, I might have a child, so I was trying to figure out which one of these and mm. two things happened at the same time. The first was I, I did get pregnant with my first uh, daughter and uh, at the same time uh, I had this opportunity to interview with a, a company called Snowbush yes. uh, for a application engineering manager. Oh, okay. And when I did that and I, I was so clear when I spoke to them, I said, I'll, I'll take this job, but I'm trying to reinvent myself. I'm not sure if this is what I want to do or if I just want to completely take a different uh, path. And uh, well, I joined them. And that that experience was amazing because it was a it was a startup. Yeah. So I realized that I love stepping outside my boundary box and going and looking at what a contract looks like and going and looking at what a customer is saying, look at pre-sales and just mm really broaden my horizons on what I was doing, right? Um, at the same time, I had a, um, a daughter, and uh, one of the things people really told me was once you have a child, you will be a setback in your career. Right. But it was so interesting. I, I had my child and I came back to work, and I came so much stronger because I started figuring Invigorated. Out. Invigorated is one, and the other thing is you start realizing how you value time and how tantrums at work don't really people are throwing tantrums for no reason because yeah. you've you've figured that out at home and then you come to work and figure that out as well so oh, it's really yeah. cool As corporate <laughs> politics means nothing then yes <laughs> you know, yes uh, interesting uh, so how did you end up at renaissance and uh, again so or is there some, some bits in between yeah some bits in between where uh, you know snowbush, snowbush got acquired reacquired divested and finally we landed up in Rambus and oh, I yes, spent course, about, yes. uh, uh, you know, I, I think I spent about uh, five or six years in Rambus. Again, largely um, applications, but very broad in that 
you know, I'd get into quality, I'd get into talking to design teams, and I really broadened my horizons. Um, it really helped, again, figure out who I was and what I wanted to do. So when we decided to move back during COVID in uh, 2020, uh, 2022, okay. um, I, um, I moved back with Rambis, but I was really exploring opportunities that were a little bit broader. broader. Okay. And that's when Renesis landed up and Renesis said, well, um, would you like to look at a design uh, lead role? Director of one of my yeah. experiences, interestingly, in all my past companies was very much about if you've not done that before, you can't do that. And I really wanted to break that barrier and yeah. say, it doesn't matter if I've not done something before. Yeah. Give me a chance. Let me show you I can do it, right? Yeah. And Renesis was amazing. They gave me uh, 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 an opportunity to go uh, build this design team um, from scratch. And... Um, and then the country head role came in along with that. So Renesis gave me broad, broad opportunity, something oh. I was really like itching to have. You, you've really grown into that role because I mean, you, you've, you've taken, um, I'm not sure if this is the right expression for India, but the bull, bull by both horns and, and actually figured out how to make it yours. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. I think it's largely because it takes a lot of my strengths, right? My strengths were going and stepping outside that boundary box and connecting with a lot of people, making sure you understand who can bring in what, and you know, bringing out the best in those people, right? Like for mm. instance, there's so much talk about diversity, but end of the day, diversity is bringing out the best in each mm. person, whoever they are, and to be able to do that, you really have to observe what someone can bring in, bring them in and then grow with them. Now that's one of the things, I mean, I'm digressing here now, but uh, you do a lot of, um, what's the word, um, awareness on diversity in India, because I think, uh, although there are many engineering level uh, uh, gen gender diversity, but actually in senior positions, there, are, there aren't uh, 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 females. So mm -hmm. I think yeah, you're trying to do a lot more awareness on that, is that right? Yeah, I am. I mean, um, within Renesis itself, uh, we had uh, under we had under ten women in India, and today we have, I think, more than seventy in Bangalore. Which is uh, we've 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 really increased our uh, um, number of women. But it's not just that, right? I think this kind of um, diversity awareness is is drop by drop by drop. It's okay. having mm -hmm. conversations with people with women. Uh, who have potential? Uh, pretty much every interview where there's a woman in 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 uh, Renesis, uh, I'll walk in for a couple of minutes, tell them a little bit of my story, or I'll yeah. ask them, "Hey, how do you plan to manage your kids?" and and they might might say it's really hard. I'll, I'll tell them, "Well, I managed. Yeah. My mom was uh, my mom passed away many years ago. I managed. You can do it too." So just yeah. I think it's so you're pro providing that inspiration. I think. Uh, so uh, one of the previous guests on, on this show, Heba, Heba Bevan, she's a, she's a female entrepreneur, and she was telling me that it shouldn't be diversity for diversity's sake, but it should be for their talent. And I think that's kind of also plays in that, doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, I don't think, I don't believe that we should hire just for numbers. It's not a 50-50 race at all. It's about bringing out the best in, people. you know, people, right? Yeah. Yeah. And just like my story earlier where you know after i had my first child and my second child each time i came out stronger yeah a lot of these women have the potential of being amazing at organization or amazing at communication and or you know amazing at engineering right and and just bringing out that best into the workforce so that you know when you're in a say a meeting room of 10 people you get really diverse ideas and then you pick right. the best yeah now um I mean, a lot of uh, you talk about mentoring and inspiring people. Uh, are there any influences in your life that uh, you think were really uh, you know, shaped, shaped what you do and what you are? So my father worked in uh, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. Um, and some of the influences he's given me are taking me to the uh, Sri Arikota Shar, where they do the launches. Wow, okay. And, uh, it's made of an impression. Oh, on, okay. on the system yeah. side. You go there and see the complexity of systems. Yes. And then you, you, you just wonder, how did this all work and how did it all come together, right? Mm. Um, and then. And what age were you then? 
Oh, I was probably uh, in my uh, high school. Okay, so high yeah, school, yeah. yeah. Teens. Yeah, my mm. teens. And um, the other thing I think that really influenced, um, my mother went through a heart problem and it was amazing as she went through the heart problem while it was a medical um, a problem. My father was like, think about this like a system and draw it out like a system in fluid mechanics. and. I was just like, wow, this is so amazing how he connected those dots from, you know, um, a rocket to someone's uh, oh. life and health. And I think that was a huge uh, inspiration for me. And then uh, I think on the on the uh, the sports, the the teamwork and the leadership came from the sports side of things. Yeah, and tell me about the sports. I mean, uh, it seems <laughs> to be the second part of your life, and I, yes. and uh, yeah, it, it, uh, do you get much time to do that as country head and? Well, you know, I make time for it. Yeah. Well, uh, as you do with everything else, <laughs> yes. For me, like, if I play the rest of the day, I'm happier, I'm calmer, I'm more efficient. So I do try and play about five times. A week. What do you play? I, I play, um, I do tennis some days, I do badminton some others, I swim, I bicycle. I kind of like cycle between all of these and then go to the gym as well. So I kind of cycle between all of these. So I can imagine when you put your hat up for your electronics career, you're going to go for one of these tournaments or the Olympics or something <laughs> like that. Unlikely. I think I'm a little old for that. Okay. But <laughs> uh, who knows, you know, like playing at least at a, uh, you know. Competitive at a, level. At an older age, competitive level. Okay. Why not? And what excites you about the industry itself? I mean, uh, the, there must be some, something that you say, wow, this is why I'm here. A few things, right? The, the first thing is, I think I've come to India at a great time. I moved mm. back to India about three years ago, and I, I think I've come at a great time. The excitement, the excitement of, you know, trying to make India a product nation, of bringing manufacturing into India. Um, you know, you talk to anybody on the street, and they're like, we know what semiconductors yeah. is. So there's that excitement that kind of uh, fuels, uh, you know, energy. But on the other hand, like, Personally, I think um, while I went through, sorry, while I went through my process of inventing and reinventing myself, mm. I I picked up so much technology along the way that right. I'm now excited about, uh, you know, building products that really make a difference. I mean, I'll give you a small example. I, I, I recently had a surgery and I'm trying to, mm. I'm, I'm recovering from it. And Did uh, you do the system level thinking? <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> but, but over and above that, one of the things I realized in India, for instance, um, I've been wanting to meet some friends in coffee shops and I can't go to a single coffee shop because India, we don't have one of those electronic uh, buttons and door opening systems. Yes. We don't have, uh, uh, you know, one of those uh, uh, wheelchairs that help you go up the steps. We don't have all of that. I mean, there's so much electronics has to offer right. a day-to-day -day basis. And I think about myself and I say, well, I'll recover in a couple of weeks and then I'll be able to open doors and go upstairs. What about all those people who can't? And yeah. as you grow older, those facilities don't exist. So I, I think on a day-to-day -day basis, there's so much electronics has to offer. So, so I think you, you look, you, if the opportunity comes to work with a company that does that, then in terms of you know, where, you know, Renaissance or yeah, working with them, You'd be look, you'll be looking at that. Yeah. <laughs> Renesis does a lot. Like uh, our purpose is making lives easier. Yeah. Um, and so what I what I really like is that a number of the products. I mean, it's it's it, so we have microcontrollers and we have uh, analog connectivity power products. So we're able to bring in a lot of day to day products. Yes. And that's something that really excites excites me about okay. Renesis, to be honest. Sounds good. Um. Uh, I always end my interviews on uh, sort of what would you tell a younger you? Uh, what would you tell, given all your experience? And I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway. What, uh, uh, what do you, would you tell young Malini? What kind of advice would you give her? Well, um, I think there are many times in my career, course of my career, where I would second guess myself. I would not. I would not. Um, I would believe in myself a little bit more, and that's what I would tell the younger you. You know, believe in yourself. Things will will figure your path out. And the second thing I would say is, if you have the opportunity to play more, do it. Great. <laughs> well, Malini, thank you very much. Thanks. Man.